So let's begin our study club. Today's topic is about tough questions and tough patients. We wanted to invite you on the call today to help us uh, put together the list of the toughest questions that we get. Well, I mean, with the price question, a lot of times when they call and ask, what do you charge? It's just because they don't know what else to ask. They, you know, they think that a crown is a crown no matter where you go. They don't understand the difference. They're not educated to the different materials and the different things. But the, the key thing that we teach here at All Star is that if you just answer their question, like if they call up and they ask a question and then you give them a flat out answer, it's going to be a very short conversation. You're basically going to give them the price. If it sounds good, they're going to be okay with it. And if it doesn't sound good, they have no basis for where you got the price from. And they're just going to end up hanging up the phone. So that's what we call reactive scheduling in if they're asking a question and you're just answering their questions, that's being reactive. It's not being proactive and thinking, how can I politely take back control of the conversation in a nice way um, and lead them into things to get them to think about more important issues versus the price, this value, quality of the dentist, different things, and find out what they're actually interested in. Maybe they want a price for one thing, but how do we know that that's what they really need to have done? So I think it's important to what we teach is you greet the patient and then you're going to do a transition statement. So they call up and they say, what do you charge for a crown or what do you charge for veneers? So in that sense, most most of the time people would say, well, we charge this. And then if they like it, great. If not, then they're going to say, OK, well, let me think about it and hang up. If you don't give them the price and you say, um, you know, well, let's just get you in for a consultation, then you're not going to get necessarily a quality lead. You don't know if the per you're going to get them to the office and then they might come in having different expectations. So what we advocate for is you do a transition statement. They say, what do you charge for veneers? You can say something like, oh, I'd be happy to help you with that. Can I get your name so I can get some more information or how can I better? Let me get some information so I can better assist you. And, and I feel like there's a lot of different ways that you could answer these types of questions uh, depending on your circumstances. But the first thing I would say is you don't, you don't want to argue with the patient. If they say, wow, that's a lot of money, you know, I wouldn't say, well, no, it's not or not compared to whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I would agree with them and say, you know what, you're, you're, you're right. Um, you might have noticed that our fees are higher. Um, and it's because our patients have become accustomed to the best and, and now they demand it from us. You know what I mean? Like I would, I would turn that around and say, you know, our, our patients come here because they know, um, you know, what they're looking for and we're really proud of the fact that we could provide it for them. I see that you're, you're asking about insurance. Are you looking for a new dentist or do you happen to be a new patient or however, however you frame it? And then get the information from them go through the rapport building process and then circle back to that. So if you do take the insurance, it's really easy because then you can just say to them that insurance plan we, we happen to take. Um, I can get your information. We can schedule you an appointment and then it's done. You have that patient on the schedule. If it's a patient where you don't take the insurance, it's the same process. You're still going to go through the great call process, greeting them, building rapport, and then engaging them. But then again, it goes back to the same thing with the price question is you have to do the show and tell process. You have to then show them the value of your office because you know that it's going to be an out of pocket expense for them. So they're not going to be willing to pay that if they don't see the value and why they should come to you. It's the same reason why people spend money to go stay at those top top five star hotels because they're paying for the experience. So if they're just coming and it's just gonna be a regular cleaning like they can get at any other office that, that might take their insurance, well then they're not gonna to come to your office. But if you're able to sufficiently share the sizzle and why your office is going to be this magical experience like a spa or however, you know, the, like Larry said, the materials or the, the training of the dentist, why their cleaning is going to be different, they're going to they're going to really be pampered, then those are the type of things. And then you go into the tell, the show and tell, where you tell them the pricing and how it works. Larry has some really, really good verbiage on insurance patients and out of network that he's talked about at some of his seminars um, that, you know, Larry, if you want to elaborate on that, you can. Well, one of the things when, when anybody 
asks about insurance, um, at some point I want to ask the patient, you know, what, what do you know about your insurance or what have you been told? Because mm -hmm. uh, often patients haven't been told anything or they're uncertain. And when we just start answering the insurance question, a lot of times it makes it seem as if though we should have all the answers, mm -hmm. when I know that we don't, because we don't work with all plans, and, and even if we did, we couldn't remember the details of, of every single one of them. So at some point, I want to ask the patient, you know, what have you been told about the insurance? And a lot of times, they'll say things like, well, I'm not certain, or they said everything was covered, you know, like it's covered 100%, and say, well, wow, if it was covered by 100%, that would, that would be great. You know, Ms. Jones, um, it sounds like you don't really know or you don't remember um, everything that was explained to you. Um, I'm sure nobody's meant to mislead you, but how about if I look into this for you? You know, so I'm not just saying I'll do it. I'm asking them, well, how, how about if I do it for you? Because I want to hear them say, thank you, or would you do that for me, please? Because if I go back to the patient, I don't want to have to be the bearer of bad news. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, wow, they told you that this would be covered at 100%. However, when I called, this is what they told me. So I'm not sure where this confusion came in. Um, however, you might want to check with the personnel department or maybe give them a call yourself. But it doesn't look like it was, you know, it's going to be covered that way. So my point here is that I want to find out from them, well, what do you know about your coverage? What have you been told? Because chances are they hadn't been told anything or what they were told is not true. So as the patient coordinator or as the dentist or whoever is dealing with the indecisive patient need to kind of figure out what's going to be in their best interest and say, well, this is what I think is going to be best for you. Because if you leave it up to them, they're just going to keep going back and forth and they're not going to make a decision. So we have to be the expert and say, you know, this for your situation, based on what you told me with this, this and this, let's go ahead and do this. Instead of saying, do you want to do this? You just say, let's do this. And then that way, it, it sort of like gently pushes them to make a decision. And if they're still not ready to make a decision, then we just say, listen, you know, we're, we totally understand we're here for you whenever you're ready. Um, but you don't want to keep having them go back and forth with you on the phone. You can say, this is, you know, let's take some time. Why don't you take some time to think about the options that I gave to you when you're ready, we're here for you. And then just leave the door open. Skipping to the know-it-all, so there's a lot of these people now, especially with the University of Google, everybody thinks that they're a doctor, everybody knows more than, than, they, than you, they know more than the doctor, so with the know-it-all, especially on the phone, when you're dealing with a know-it-all, you don't want to challenge them, so especially if you're the person answering the phone, they're like, you're not the doctor, they're going to probably challenge the doctor, but it's not your place to go back and forth with the patient and get into an ego battle of, well, let me tell you how much I know. You just say, well, you know, these are your appointment options. You, you know, we'll be happy to have you talk about all of that with the doctor when you come into the office and just be really nice with them and don't tell them that they're stupid or <laughs> whatever. Um, so that's, that's pretty much it with the know-it-all is just make them feel important and special and then just say the doctor will address it when you come into the office. And then I would just let the doctor know before they come in, just say, well, this is the patient and this is kind of what they felt. And, and so that way the doctor's prepared for it. And again, you don't want to challenge them, but kind of educate them and get them to understand, you know, what, what the, the truth of it all is. Uh, if you get that, um, that know-it-all person, um, <clears throat> yep, I would acknowledge, hey, I hear you because they're trying to let you know they know more than you do. And so you don't you don't want to be able to get into a fight with them. Um, but in in that case, I would say, you know, um, I, I see that you've got some concerns or it seems like you know a lot about this type of procedure. Let me see if I understand you correctly. And here's a time when you're going to want to repeat back to them exactly what they had you know, told you. So what it sounds like is because you think it doesn't hurt, uh, it's not something that needs to be treated. But the point here is that you just want to repeat back to them what they're, what they're telling you. Because a lot of times when you do that, they start to think it over themselves and they realize, you know, they kind of work through it on their own and they'll begin to realize like, yeah, that would make sense if we, if we caught it before it broke, you know, that would be a better option and, and that would save me a lot of money. Um, but definitely here you want to acknowledge and you want to repeat it back to them.
you have to constantly be training. You have to constantly be exploring. And like we did today, you can't academic knowledge or even us even today giving you some verbiage. This is the first step. Okay, you have to you have to first step is you have to you have to really study the verbiage. You have to do it over and over again because you forget and then you have to practice. So I encourage you with your team to what you hear, talk about this with your team. Role play your team the scenarios. Um, and then also learn to become a practical psychologist, okay? Rapport, to be a master of rapport, which is what our whole philosophy is about. You have to be a practical psychologist. It means you have to understand yourself. You have to understand people. You have to be able to control yourself when somebody's attacking you and not get defensive. You have to also be able to uh, handle people. You have to also be able to uh, handle people. 